Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Toxic Biohazard, and today I kind of want to teach you more so a technique than this exact patch, but here we go. This is kind of like a glass arp, metallic-y bell thing, so here we go. It sounds something like this. Okay, so this is basically made from two sine waves and a little bit of modulation, kind of. So without further ado, let's get into it here. So let's go to the other toxic biohazard, reset the program, and we have our sine wave. So first thing we need to do is increase the transpose by two octaves. So scroll this all the way up to 24. So we have a kind of an, an annoying uh, sine wave. So let's turn off our ARP for now. We're gonna come back to that. But basically we just have kind of a high pitched sine wave. So not too interesting. So for the second sine wave, let's turn this on here and let's bring this 100% in the mix, just like that. So basically the whole technique here is gonna be in this frequency offset. And I know these knobs are kind of like right on our in our faces on, on the offsetters, but sometimes I feel like these are easily overlooked, but they shouldn't be because there's a lot of cool stuff and textures you can get this get with these. So they do change the pitch, but it's a frequency offset in Hertz, which is really, really cool. So basically if you're playing a hundred Hertz and you offset this by another hundred, then this one's going to be offset by or hundred or 200 Hertz, wherever you set this at. But if you're playing a note, the fundamentals, maybe 2k or something like that, it's still going to have the same frequency offset. And by keeping it at a static offset, you're going to get some interesting timbres with that. So with that being said, let's see this thing in action. So let's alt click this back to default and we have two sine waves. So first things first, let's kind of listen to see what this does. And you can see down here in the EQ how it just kind of moves these, that second sine wave just to wherever it is. So basically it's a very cool concept. So the whole point in this one here is to kind of just give you that extra texture, the extra timbre. So for the second oscillator operator, let's bring this up one octave here, something kind of like that. So when we alt click this here, we basically have an octave of our first one. Now we're not necessarily gonna set this at the moment at a certain value. What we need to do is kind of first sculpt our sound and then kind of pick our timbre, our texture of what we actually like. So with that being said, let's go to our envelope here. Let's bring down our decay here and we don't want any sustain for this because it's kind of a, it's a pluggy sound. It should just pluck and kind of go away, right? And do our release about the same as our decay here. And then for the filter, let's turn this on here. Let's go to a low pass. And then our cutoff is gonna be kind of substantially low because there's gonna be a lot of harmonics that we're gonna be dealing with. And we kind of want, want those harmonics for the texture, but not necessarily for all of them because they can get pretty harsh. So for our filter uh, modulation knob here, let's bring this up a little bit like that. And then for the filter envelope, this is gonna be important here. Let's drop our sustain all the way and then bring our decay and release down kind of something like this. And we're kind of getting that little kind of hollowy sound. So for this, what's kind of nice, if we turn on our gear here, go to the wrench and turn on maybe an upward ARP or something like that. So we can just kind of hold down a chord and kind of just listen to how the texture changes. So let's bring our volume up just a little bit like that. So this almost has that kind of wood sound and that's kind of a cool texture. But notice once we change this frequency offset to different values, we're gonna get a whole different texture to our sound. And really up around the 4K area, you really kind of get that really belly, kind of crystally glass sound. And if we raise our cutoff here, you'll see how much of these harmonics were cutting off. So there's a lot of crazy stuff happening there. Bring a little bit of the resonance and a little bit of the key tracking. See, when we get up here, it can get a little bit harsh, so that's kind of why we want the cutoff a little bit lower. So it's kind of a little bit muted there and maybe dial in the EG amount appropriately. And then we could always maybe put on an EQ and kind of drop down the 8K a little bit in the 4K. So it's a little bit more muted. 
So now that we have kind of this core sound here, this is kind of where the effects is going to kind of come in. And also the drive. Don't overlook the drive because a little bit of this drive really makes the texture what it is. You notice how those harmonics just came in. So here's no drive. It's very round. And as we bring this drive in, we kind of get that nice saturation in there. So now let's add some chorus here. And it kind of just opens it up. And we also want to have some delay. So let's turn on delay on. And for the sync, let's do one over 16, something kind of like that. Maybe a little bit of blur. Yeah, maybe no depth. A little bit less feedback. And some sound like this, this a sound like this is kind of cool. If I were going to do some external processing, I maybe would use a different delay. But since we're kind of in the synth anyway, we can just leave this here for now. And last but not least, we do want to put some reverb on this as well. So let's go to our handy dandy Valhalla reverb right over here. And when you, have, when you have something kind of set up, feel free to kind of change this frequency offset and kind of just feel what you kind of want, what kind of sound that you want to go for. Maybe it's something like that is a little bit more your speed. Although I kind of do like it higher up like that. And maybe even a different waveform. can give you a little bit of extra texture that you might not know the, that you might have liked. So that's basically the concept. The whole kind of takeaway here is don't overlook these frequency offsets. You can make a lot of cool sounds with these here. And last kind of thing to also keep in mind, if we look at these meters here, that's a lot of movement happening. And some notes like that, that really high one that can really poke out and kind of be a little bit annoying in a mix. So maybe it might be a nice thing to compress that at some point and kind of just keep all those dynamics in check. But yeah, that's kind of basically something to keep in mind if you're doing ARPs like this, especially bell sounds, because they can get out of control pretty quickly. So there's only one problem is I don't have a name for this at this point. So, oh man. Okay, so it's like a glass bell, the the... The glass bell, I guess. I don't know. Beautiful glass bell. We need an adjective in there. The beautiful glass bell. Okay. If you want to get the beautiful glass bell for a preset, there's a link in the video description below, and it can be yours. But I do suggest that you make this here because there might be somewhere in this frequency offset that you might like a little bit better than this. So definitely give it a try to make. It's pretty simplistic. Really using two sine waves, a couple effects, a little bit of filtering, and uh, some drive. Like I said, don't overlook the drive. It's a very, very cool drive in this uh, synthesizer. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and use the frequency offset. It's pretty... It's pretty good. See you in the next video.